Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Worship Drumming. This is a channel where I do drum lessons and I also do drum tutorials based around a worship center context. And in today's video, we are doing a drum tutorial over the song Great Are You Lord by All Sons and Daughters. This song to me is kind of timeless. I think it's just always going to be around. It's an easy one to do, whether just playing it for Sunday service, doing it at a church camp, and everyone can have a lot of fun with it, especially the drums. So we'll get to that here in a moment. This song is in 6-8. The way I have the metronome set up is in 6-4 at 144 BPM but you can still count that as 6-8. So this is what the metronome is going to sound like for the song. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's just how we're counting our metronome as we go through this. If you've never played a song in 6-8, this is actually a really good one to start with. This seems a little intimidating because it's in a weird time signature that you're not used to. Stick with me, you'll be able to do it. It's not too bad. Let's start with uh, the beginning of the song. Um, I guess that's a good place to start. Beginning of the song, it's just gonna be like piano, guitar. There's no drums throughout the first verse. Drums don't really come in until about the first chorus and it's really depending on if you wanna play it or kind of what you communicate with your band as to what are we doing here. And really all the drums do on the first chorus is that they are going to swell in with some cymbals and then kind of just play uh, like the body here of your ride cymbal, maybe about like on your one and fours or maybe just on the one count. So to give you an idea, that'd just be we're swelling into the chorus. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't even have to be that often. It could just simply be like, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're really just kind of accenting, um, keeping a little bit of time there and just introducing uh, just some symbols into the song. That's really all it is. So playing that with the metronome, I'll try to give you an idea of what it would be like. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we pour So you can do different things like that. Um, excuse my terrible singing voice, I can't sing at all. Don't claim to know how to. Uh, you're gonna have to deal with that throughout this video. So that's pretty much all it is. I'm not gonna uh, play through it like through a full chorus. It's really, you're gonna have to kind of feel it out. You're just playing some cymbals, accenting some things. Now, after that, we get to have some fun because from there, we're gonna drop down into a verse. I don't know why, but I love this part so much that the drums get to do uh, to start off the verse. So whenever the verse comes around, you're gonna be playing something real simple, but it's kind of cool the way they start and then uh, pick up halfway through the verse. Uh, the verse starts with, you give life. And on that word, life is when our beat one is. So on life, we're giving a open hi-hat with a kick drum at the same time on one. So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. So you just hit that nice, big and open. It doesn't have to be like slamming into it, but just like, this is an electronic hit so I can kind of dig into it, but it'd just be like a nice one, two, three, four, five, six. Now on the fours, you're just gonna hit the snare drum. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're kind of keeping that pattern, but we're gonna leave out the hi-hat um, a couple times there. I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean here, and I'll, I'll do, I'll try to say some of the lyrics as I play it, so it'd be like, you give life, you are love, two, three, four, you bring light to the darkness. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of what you're doing there. You're just hanging it out on the kick on one, Snares are on four. The cool thing is that they're gonna uh, do a little pickup here. Um, and it's kind of, this is what I really love about it. I don't know why, it's so simple too. On darkness, so the word ness, that the, basically the, oh, what is that? That's like the suffix of that word there. So on ness, you are hitting the hi-hat open with the snare drum this time. So it's like what you did on the first thing. We're like, light, two, three, four. But this time it's, darkness so this time you're hitting the snare and hi-hat open and then from there it's going to go into just uh, a regular groove so let me uh, show it to you real quick i'm still going to leave my mic on so i can talk here and then i'll show you just metronome no mic and you can get an idea of what it's like so it's like give life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just drops right into this simple verse here. I'm just playing uh, hi-hats. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then kicks on one, snares on four, and that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
And remember to close your hat. Don't leave your hat open uh, while, you're, while you're playing that part of the verse there. So I'm gonna run through that first verse. No mic on, you'll hear the metronome and get an idea of what it sounds like. Okay, so there I played a little bit of a fill at the end. Uh, you can kind of choose what you want to do here. There are some places to throw fills in, and that's what I really like about this song is that the drums have an opportunity to throw in some accents of different fills. Uh, it doesn't have to be so straight at one, two, three, four. Like you get to go a little bit beyond that. Kind of what I like to do there to throw a little bit of breaks in there is just think about your beats five and six and you have four beats there. It's kind of just like playing in four, four. So think of like your favorite fill in 4-4 four, four that goes three and four and, or four E and a. Uh. It's basically four notes, it's the same thing here, but you just count it as five and six. So I like to count it as one, two, three, four, five and six and. Or I could, it's just like if I were to play three and four E and a. Uh. It's the same thing, just five and six and, four E and a. Uh. Same thing. Uh, but just make sure that you are locked into that 6-8 uh, time signature whenever you get back into your normal group. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, six. So all I'm doing there, just to really break down what I'm doing, you can split it up however you want. My five is on the snare, and a five is on the rack tom, and then six, and the and of six is on the floor tom. Five and six and. From there, it's gonna go into a chorus. Now the chorus, you can play it many different ways. I prefer to play it uh, with an open hat, keeping things pretty straightforward and simple. Um, and that's because I'm having to fill in a lot of noise typically at my church where we don't have an electric guitar and a keyboard and acoustic guitar um, and a bass guitar. We don't usually have those every single Sunday. Uh, for example, I'm playing this song tomorrow and it's just gonna be, uh, three vocalists, a guitar player, and me. So I'm gonna have some filling in to do here. And I'll probably just play it straightforward as an open hi-hat in the chorus. And I'll show you kind of more what the song does with a little bit of backing track stuff to it. Sticking more true to the song, they're gonna have the hi-hat closed. Instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, they're gonna throw in the eighth notes with the left hand, or I guess technically it's like 16th notes. So I'm playing one and two and three and four and five and six and. And then just kick on one, snare on four. One and two and three and four and five and six and. One and two and three and four and five and six and. But the metronome is a little bit faster. So if you want to keep it simple, like, and just kind of fill in a little bit of noise with a washy hi-hat there, you could just play one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, just really kind of whatever you want to do. If you want to stick more true to the song, you're playing those eighth notes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you kind of the more true to the song, but I just want to, I wanted to give you an idea of different things that you could do um, if you wanted to. So actually, let me do it with some lyrics first, then I'll do it with the metronome and cut this mic off. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out. But here's what it would sound like with just the metronome. Then we'll talk about throwing in a couple more things here. Just a second. So I threw in a couple different accents there. So basically how you do that is uh, just some like general principles is on the uh, on the beat six. Yes, that's what I was about to say. Okay, on beat six, you can hit your kick drum and then uh, also hit your kick drum on beat one and it gives this nice boom, boom. So if I'm playing it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So you don't have to do that every time. If you throw it in every so often, it's almost like a fill in the chorus without having to stray away from keeping this going in the background. Because sometimes when we stray away from that, 
then we try to come back to it, it's a little awkward or it just sounds weird because you broke away from what was keeping uh, the beat going. The other thing that you can do is throw in some accents on your snare drum. So I think it's on the end of two. So if I'm counting, I'm on one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. And and you can kind of just throw those things in there. You could also throw it in, I believe it's on the and of five. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. And just kind of whatever you want to do there. I know I sped up there a little at the end. Just some accent patterns to think about throwing into the chorus. From the chorus, this is where the song gets really fun and we get to go into the bridge. Okay, give me about 25 seconds to be a dork about the chords in this song. And if you're a drummer, you'll kind of hear this anyways, but you notice the chord change once it hits the bridge and it sounds kind of different. Now this happens all the time in songs. Usually they hit like the two minor. Oh, now the song's changed. You don't know that they're doing it, you just hear it and you kind of feel it and you're like, okay, now it's time to change uh, how this song feels. What's really cool about this song is that uh, the one chord is actually played on the chorus. So like the song is in the key of A, I believe. So they actually don't play an A chord until the bridge comes around where usually the song starts on the A chord. So it's kind of cool the way they, they make the bridge feel here. Uh, by doing this. It's one of the neat things about the song. All right, I'm done being a dork about all the chords. I just think it's really neat that they do it. Once the bridge comes around, there's gonna be an instrumental bridge to kind of, as like a get ready for you. So that way you don't have to play anything and change anything right away. That's the guitar and piano's job. But once we hit this part in the song, there's typically gonna be either three or four bridges uh, at my church. I think tomorrow I'm doing three of them. Uh, I've played four and I don't think I've went up to five, but usually it's three or four. I'm gonna just, act like I'm playing it three times like I'll be tomorrow and I think it's three times on the album but I could be wrong. So the first time around we're just giving like real light hits on our kick drum and real light hits on our floor tom. And that kick is on one, floor tom's on four. Basically the floor tom is replacing the snare drum. So when it comes around it will be like all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. Once again, excuse the bad singing, but you get it. You're just keeping that nice and light, helping the band keep in time as you go through this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not gonna play that solo by itself. I think most of you got that because you're a rock star and you got this. Now from there, we're eventually gonna get around to uh, moving up in intensity for this. And so once the chorus comes around again, we're gonna add in our rack tom on the end of two. Just like I talked about earlier with that accent that we played, where we're playing that accent on the snare drum on the end of two, we're gonna throw that up here on the rack tom with the left hand, and our right hand on the floor tom, instead of just hitting on the fours, is gonna start counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I've talked about this concept before, just all I'm doing is my right hand's been over here, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just moving over here, one, two, I've been having a lot of triggering issues, so sorry if that kind of sounds weird. But I just moved my right hand over to the floor tom. And then left hand, instead of hitting the snare drum, is now hitting the rack tom. I have a, I have a video called uh, The Key to Playing Drums, and literally it's just, instead of doing it here, I'm just switching it and doing it here. It's, 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 it should be simple. Hopefully, hopefully you get what I'm saying here. So second time bridge comes around as I pick up intensity. One, two, and three. A great thing to do like every two bars is that five and six and I talked about, those four notes, just play them on your floor tom or just play them walking down your toms as like a little filler. So I'll show you what I mean. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, four, five, and six, one, two, throw it in every so often there and it kind of helps uh, give a little filler in there especially whenever you have a floor tom that's acoustic and doesn't keep making weird triggering noises so I apologize for that actually let me play that metronome without my terrible voice in the background acting like I can sing here's that Now, 
if you want, you could also throw cymbals uh, in there kind of on those ones. So like. <laughs> So just an idea it helps kind of pick up the intensity but once again that's more if you're just if it's just you and an acoustic guitar like i'll definitely be doing that tomorrow but if you have like piano and everything else filling in noise maybe you don't have to hit that right away lastly then i'm on uh time three i'm gonna play all these together here in just a second just so you know third time around on the bridge i'm going to do the same thing except my snare drum is going to start coming in on four and you can actually do this before you get to the third time around to that lord part so whenever it holds out the word lord i'm going to throw in the snare drum to kind of introduce that going into the next part of the song then once we hit to that third time bridge then the snare drum is just kind of embedded into playing that so the third time bridge is the same thing except uh, my snare drum's on four, and I'm definitely hitting some cymbals uh, on the one beat there. So it'll be like. So yeah, I'm just kind of throwing in some different things. I'm just, I, the core of it is still one, two, and three, four, five, six, one, two, and three, four, five, six. And then I'm hitting some cymbals on one, I'm hitting some symbols on four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Still throwing in some little fills every so often. And then the last thing actually that will change, I didn't play it there, but I should have. Uh, the last thing that will change other than just doing one, two, three, four, five, six, is I'm gonna actually uh, pick up on the kick drum and I'm gonna play that on one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically it's replacing what my right hand was doing, going one, now it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is gonna really help it ramp up in intensity as you get ready to go into your final chorus. Third time bridge kind of sounds like this. So there's just a lot of stuff you can do there. You're just really driving it and just throwing out a bunch of stuff, having fun. That's the main thing. Worship, have fun. Great time. Okay, now, to end it, when we get to the part where it says Lord, that's just going to be a big fat build in 6-8. So we're just one, two, three, four, five, six. So how that works is really I'm just snare drum, ride cymbal, kick drum, every, every hit. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to get fancy, you can double up on the hands and count one and two and three and four and five and six and while your kick drum counts one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to be even fancier, you can put your kick drum uh, on all those ands as well. Typically what I like to do is start with the hands fast and then start uh, doubling up on the kick drum. So uh, kind of just listen to the kick as I do this. So that's one way that uh, you can do it there. Uh, there's different ways you can end that build. You can end it with some fills. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the mic. Don't have to listen to my terrible singing. I'm gonna start the metronome. I'm gonna play uh, the bridge the first time, second time, third time, and the build going into the chorus. And we'll talk about the chorus here in a second. Uh, just, I'll put somewhere on the screen what bridge I'm on.
Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what it should sound like and how it should flow through there. Once again, you might have heard something I did there and like, that sounds cool. You didn't specifically talk about that. I play this song different every single time. I'm just having fun throwing in some fills. Remember, five and six and, those are your fills. Throw it in wherever you want, however you like. You just gotta experiment with it sometimes. So there's, that's kind of, the formula is one, is five and six and. That's the formula is those four hits. Play it somewhere uh, as you go through it. There, I hit that last chorus, and that last chorus just needs to sound nice and big. You just came out of a build, so it needs to be really powerful and just driving the song with the drum. I typically just big washy ride cymbal uh, on all my hits. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kick drum on one, snare drum on four, and then throw some different accents in around it. So I'm definitely gonna be playing the kick drum on six. So I get that one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, snare drum, throw in some accents. That and of two, the and of five, throw those in there. Um, hit, hit the crash cymbal on beat four with the snare drum. Make it just sound really big. So that would be like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, Uh, I like to add a lot of symbols to give a song power um, in, in some areas where it's like, man, this needs to sound big. So I love throwing in symbols. Uh, set up at church, I got another crash symbol over here. Work with what you got. Uh, if you gotta throw in more kicks to make it sound powerful, you can. And this is where I said like at the beginning of this video, this song's awesome for the drums. And that's because at these times, you just have so much freedom. You're not just tied down to one, two, three, four, five, six keep that in there and then throw in some of those accents. So once again, on the and of two, so I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or throw it in on the end of five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just kind of however you want to do it. Just work on playing those accents and then let it all flow together just the more that you practice. Now from there, the song's gonna eventually die out and this is where you gotta talk to your band about, hey, what are we doing to end this song? Sometimes you might just be playing full out on the drums and when they get back around to the chorus again, you just, you just die out immediately. So it could have like this real big. So it could be like that, like I'm just playing big and it dies out. Talk about how your band wants to end it. Um, in the recording, they all kind of just gradually die out. There's somewhat of like a sudden stop there. You can keep those hits on the right cymbal just to keep everyone in time. Uh, you could come back over to the hi-hat and just play really light. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. If you're really fancy, you can throw in some rolls there. But that's, once again, that's gonna be for people who can actually do it. Um, if, don't worry, if you can't play roles, we'll get to that another time in a different video. Uh, let me know if you want me to teach you how to play roles because I don't even know how to play roles. I don't know how to teach someone how to do it, but leave a comment if you want me to try to figure out how to teach it and I'll do my best. Anyways, that's everything for this song. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, one thing I know, I'm gonna get a comment about my drumsticks and how they just look incredibly dirty. Uh, no, these are Promark drumsticks. They're supposed to have like this fire burnt wood looking thing to it. I don't know, I got them as a Christmas gift. Uh, they're really cool. So I've used them in a video once and everyone's like, what did you do to your drumsticks, bro? And so, yeah, that's just that's just the way that they are. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in more content like this in the future. Leave a thumbs up if you learned something new. Leave a comment below about any sort of uh, drum tutorials or uh, drum lessons that you would like for me to go over and I'll try to get around to those. Uh, have a great day. Go serve the Lord.